Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of looking at a new 5.1 feature introduced in Unreal Engine. And we're going to be taking a look at the enhanced input action settings we can do now. These give us a lot more freedom, a lot more choice and a lot more options when it comes to handling inputs for different platforms. So let's take a look at how we can use these and implement it into our games. So in 5.1, Epic have introduced the enhanced input settings. These are settings that we can set up for our inputs that give us a lot more options and a lot more control over how our inputs work on different platforms. So we're going to talk about how we set up these input action uh, and contexts and look at how they work and how we can make our own uh, for our own projects. So if you were to go to your project settings in 5.1, and go down to input you'll notice you now got a warning at the top of the screen saying axis and action mappings are now uh, basically not being used anymore so what you'll now find is down here in the same section you will find default player input class is now set to enhanced player input and input component class is to enhanced input component so this means you can use the new enhanced input action system now the way you define this is pretty simple really now, if in your folders, in your third person template, brand new 5.1 project, you'll see an example of this in input folders. And it basically, inputs are set up into two different file types. You've got the context, which is this yellow one, and you've got the actions, which are these light blue ones, these cyan ones. And if you want to think about it in terms of the old system, the light blue refer to the actual inputs themselves, so the actual names of the inputs and what mappings they have. And the context is sort of the collection of them being used for different platforms and how they're defined there. So let's talk about how this works. Let's go into each action and take a look. So let's go into move here. In the move, you just define what it's called, obviously, and then you can put a description if you like. You can then define what if it's consumed, whether it's where it triggers when it's paused, some of the settings that you've had before uh, in the old system. You also set up the value type. Now the value type is important because this determines what kind of value it's going to output whether it's going to be a boolean, a float, or a vector 2D. Being a move input, this will be a vector 2D. So that's all good. So once you've got an input action, you can then assign it to a context, which are these yellow ones here. Let's open the context and take a look at our mappings here. And you can see here the mappings have been added to our context. If I expand open our move, you can see the different inputs that it would accept for this movement. This includes all of the keyboard input keys and gamepad input keys. So you put them all here and describe, define them all here. Now, when you go to add this into your game, you go over to your player character. And you'll see on begin play, in the controller, they are setting up the enhanced input local player subsystem and adding the mapping context so they're adding the mapping context here okay, and that's the what we just looked at that yellow option there and then you, down here you can see the inputs being used so you need enhanced input action ia look ia move and ia jump and all the values we ever want are coming from here now this may look confusing and strange if you're used to the old system but no need to fret because basically it's combining a lot of useful features into one so we can call it when it's triggered. So move in this case is called when triggered. See that working on here. You can tell when it's been started. So it could be uh, basically triggered means it'll, it'll process and the started is also the same sort of thing basically. But started uh, will occur once. Okay, triggered can occur afterwards. Well, ongoing is still being there. So the triggering is still going on. Cancelled is it's been cancelled by some reason and completed, it's reached the end of its uh, basically release of the key. Uh, so for movement, we constantly want to check the movement rate and that's going to be triggered here. And we're reading the action uh, values in X and Y and plugging them into our add movement inputs. Yeah, like we had used to do before on the old input set system. Now, if I go down to jump, you can see the jump is using triggered for jumping. I oh, yeah, the start. Um, but when we complete it, we take the stop jumping. So again, it's like the release key. And you can see here, look, is using a similar sort of thing for our yaw and pitch input. So a lot cleaner setup. But it also gives the options to do things like hold down keys, for example, because you have access to this ongoing. 
And what's really cool about the ongoing stuff is that if you expand open the advanced options here, you can see how long has elapsed and, and or how long has it been triggered for. They can do things like hold down the button for five seconds and you can calculate that easily now without having to do some weird jerry uh, rigging sort of system to make it work. So let's put in a new input here to make our character crouch. So we're going to go into our input folder and I'll make a new action input. So I'm going to right click and go to our input section and we're going to go over to input action. And in here we're going to go IA crouch. And we go into my mapping and all of this I want is okay and the value type for crouch will be a boolean okay i'm either going to push it or i'm not going to push it i don't care about being a float or vector duty just either off or on that's all good i can leave it like that i then want to add this crouch to my context so let's open up the context add the new mapping and choose my crouch from from the drop down i can now set up the different keys i can have and as you can see here you can add the modifiers too but I don't need to do that I'm just going to add left shift to do the crouch and save that now if I go over to my third person character I'm going to search for my IA crouch and you'll see in here enhance action event crouch and then all I have to do is on triggered call crouch like so don't forget, we also need to make sure our character movement here is set up to receive crouch inputs. And we're going to tick can crouch. Now if I want it to uncrouch, I'm going to do it when it's released. So I'm going to go down to completed and do uncrouch. And we are done. Compile. And we're good to go. So now we're going to have a toggle that let, when we let go of the key, uncrouches. Now my character does not have the animation for this, but we should see the camera go down represent that crouch happening okay now let's say i want to change this now to a hold so i have to hold down the key in order for the crouch to happen so what we do is we go into our input action crouch and in there you'll see trigger and we go to triggers add new triggers and in here you've got some pre-built triggers for us we've got corded actions combos down hold or release press pulse release tap we want to use hold Click on hold and expand open the options again and you can determine how long you can hold the button down for in order for this to work. I'm going to leave it as one second and hit save and let's go ahead and push play now. So without doing any extra coding, if I hold down shift now, it's going to take one second for that crouch to happen. There we go. One second again. Crouch. Go. So it's super, super simple to get a hold in place for any key that you want to do. And if you want it to show that value on the screen via a widget, you can do because you have access to our elapsed time in seconds with the elapsed seconds here. So for example, if I go to ongoing here and print string, do elapsed seconds and hit save, and hit play, you can see the elapsed seconds being output now, and then, which means we can plug that into a widget to showcase a progress bar or when we're holding down a key so a lot lot simpler method in order to achieve that hold down input and there we go as you can see it's super quick and easy to do things that used to take a long time we can now do hold for example at a click of a button if you like this video and want to see more features from 5.1 and onwards please make sure you subscribe to the channel and if you want to support me, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can support me over there for, one, for just $1 a month for access to all my videos early before everyone else. Thanks to everyone who's watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.